Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we've got a really cool tool by the guys over at Vassell. And of course, I'm talking about the AI powerhouse known as v0.dev. Now this is a tool that Vassell themselves have gone ahead and released and it essentially allows you to create really cool components, landing pages, bits of code by simply adding prompts. So without further ado, today you're gonna learn how to go ahead and build this beautiful pricing card in a record breaking time. And the best part, it goes ahead and uses things like Tailwind. So all the the things that we love are included in the code. Before we hop into the lesson, let's talk about our sponsor for today's video, Oxylabs. Oxylabs is an industry leading web scraping solution with the world's largest ethical proxy network. They pride themselves on being one of the only ones who propagate ethical and responsible scraping. Now, lots of you have been asking me about the different types of proxies that Oxylabs has to offer. So let's break it down. Let's talk about their most popular product, the residential proxies. They have over 100 million proxies located around the world. This means they can fit your customer and business needs no matter the scale. They even have mobile proxies. Oxylabs offers fast 5G, 4G and even 3G mobile proxies with over 20 million proxies in their pool. But what if you want a proxy for longer sessions? This is where the rotating ISP proxies guarantee a long session time. But Sunny, isn't this super expensive? Well, if budget is a concern, shared data center proxies has got your back. But what if you're like me and you want all of the power? Private data center proxies is the way to go. Unlimited Limited bandwidth and unlimited concurrent sessions. If you want to scrape some of the toughest websites out there, <coughs> Amazon, their web on blocker proxy is the solution. Check out all of the amazing proxies in the first link in the description and get a special 30% discount as well. Now, without further ado, let's jump straight back into the lesson. So here we have v0.dev, the website. Now this is, of course, by the guys of Vassell, you get a nice little prompt box. In fact, what we're gonna do is we're not actually gonna start with the empty prompt ourselves. We're actually gonna go ahead and look down and you can see new generations, which are basically generations that people have just done or the featured tab. Now, one in particular that I've actually really liked is by Stephen Tay, an awesome developer in the community. And you can go ahead and see that this is the pricing card that he has actually created. And what's cool about this is if we click into it, we can actually see all of the the different iterations that he started with and how he basically prompted his way to the final result. So this is obviously the final result, which is a version 23. So he's done 23 different iterations of prompts, but let's look at the first one, for example. So the first one you can see, he's gone ahead and wrote get started for CTAs and he's probably gone ahead and included a prompt before that, which said something like, you know, make a pricing card SaaS setup or something along the lines. And slowly, slowly, you can see in the beginning, it didn't have ticks, tick boxes. And then the next prompt would have been something like make the check marks be in the same line as the feature and also put them in a circle green background with a white foreground. So you can go ahead and, you know, give it the prompts it needs. And of course, guys, remember, it's going to be down to the quality of your prompt. So just take that with a pinch of salt. If you give bad prompts, it's going to have a bad output, right? But in fact, I'm going to skip ahead over to the 23. So this is the final output here. And you can see this is a really nice, clean UI and it's actually responsive as well. But what if I want to add to this? So let's go ahead and say, I want to fork this. So I'm going to go ahead and click fork right now. Creates a copy for you. And then we can go ahead and make add-ons to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and say something like add a, we've got the price right for you and so forth. So I've gone ahead and done this before. So add a, we've got the right price for you, large sleek title above the pricing cards and add a subtitle beneath it. Simply hit enter. Now what it's doing is it's using AI to go ahead and generate the next iteration of the component. So you can see here, we've got the right price for you. Choose the plan that fits your need. And remember, I'm not writing any of this code. And it's worth mentioning while this is actually happening that yes, although this is creating the code for us, Guys, remember, it's also in a very early stage of development. And yes, whilst it's so cool, you're going to see quickly why it's also important that you understand how to code. And remember, this is not a replacement, simply more of a kind of cool tool to go ahead and speed up your development. And obviously, GitHub Copilot, those things, you can go ahead and combine it to assist your development. But I remember, assist is the key word there, right? So in this case, I'm pretty happy with this. You can go ahead and you know add on as many iterations as you want, but that was fairly straightforward. Now, the only other thing that I want to do is right now, this seems to be centered in the page. I'm going to simply say align all of the items at the top of the page. Because if I was to go ahead and put this component into another page, it's going to go ahead and actually be centered. And I just want to be, you know, able to push it at the top of the page. So we're going to make one more change. And now you can see it's aligned all of everything at the top as opposed to being central. 
And then once that's done, we're actually gonna click on this code button over here. So it's still rendering. You can see by this little spinning circle, we're gonna click on code. Now, obviously let it do its thing. And afterwards, I want you to pay attention to this. MPX V0 add, right? Now, this is something that is so, so cool. So if we're gonna go ahead and click firstly on learn more, it's gonna take us to this setup. Now, the VO library is actually based on ShadCN. So you wanna go ahead and actually install ShadCN into your project. So the first things first, I'm actually gonna use MPX create next app and create a YouTube tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into my code right now. So let's do CD YouTube tutorial do code to go ahead and pull it up. Now, once we're here, we're gonna go ahead and add in Shad CN. So we're gonna go ahead and pop in that example here. So we're gonna go ahead and run the CLI command, add it into our project. There's a couple of questions it's gonna ask you. Fairly straightforward. I'm just gonna keep all of the defaults. That's completely fine. And just like that, we have Shad CN installed. Once you've done that, you simply wanna go over to your project and let's actually look at the overall design that it came up with by heading back to the canvas. And you can see the middle one was centrally aligned and now it's top aligned, which is perfect. I want to add this to my code. So I simply click on code and I copy this line. So all you gotta do is click that and you see they give you a custom unique ID. So let's go over to our code now and we're simply gonna go ahead and pop this in. MPX VO add and then it's got a nice ID. So you go ahead and add it. And what we have to do is give it a custom name for the component. So it will actually find that, that exact, you know, um, bit of code that we've gone ahead and generated. And it says, what should we name it? In this case, I'm gonna name it pricing cards component, right? And hit enter. And as you can see, it will install all of the dependencies that are reliant in order to make this work. Now, if we head over to components, you can see a new pricing card. And this is really cool, guys. Look, we've got the right price for you and everything. So. Everything is actually there off the bat. So what I'm gonna do very quickly is go ahead, go to my page, which is my landing page, and I'm simply gonna clear everything out from the beginning. So we simply have a nice empty page to work with, and I'm gonna just pop in the pricing cards themselves. Okay, so we're gonna import it like so. Now, with that said, we're gonna run our project, npm run dev, and it would start up on 3000. Let's go ahead and pull this up. And bam, just like that, guys, a full pricing card component looking absolutely beautiful is on the page. And you can see really the power of the AI tool here. So it's gone ahead and generated this for us. We don't have to start from absolute scratch and it speeds up the overall time for development and it just saves us a bunch of trivial issues. Now, this is not perfect, however. So let's go ahead and resize this. And what we can see is you see there's a few glitches here with our responsiveness. Now, this is actually because the initial design was responsive. However, when we added this title right here, we went ahead and changed some of the code. And only again, if you know what you're doing with your code, can you go ahead and fix this? Hence why it's quite important. So what I'm gonna do is pop this over on the side so we can actually go ahead and code side by side with our code on this side. So I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. So this should be a one column design right here. And you see, if we just go ahead and create code that we don't understand, this is where we can run into problems. Now, if we break it down, this overall container here is a grid, which is by default on mobile grid column one. And then after a medium breakpoint, turns to a three column design. And you're probably wondering, well, that's perfect, right? Well, actually, when we introduced this element right here, it spans across three columns. And all we need to simply do here is add in a medium tag. So it only spans across three columns when we're on a three column support, which means that once we've hit past the medium size or not. So if we go ahead and do that right now, you will see it fixes the overall problem. Now you can go ahead and see it's actually responsive the way that we intended it for initially. So things like that, it really does make a difference just to understand how the code works. If you don't understand the code that comes out of this, for example, things like the dark mode support has actually been added by default. So this will change and you need to be aware of that. So that way you don't get surprised if your users have a system setting, for example, to by default use dark mode. Um, so you need to really understand what your code is. And I would not recommend using these tools unless you have a good understanding and good fundamental of Tailwind CSS and Next.js and you know, in general React. Now, as I mentioned before, if we can go ahead and make small little changes here. So if I go into the middle tab right here and I wanted to make it, for example, text pink 500, 
you can go ahead and customize it to your heart's content and that for me is pretty perfect at the moment i think i'm pretty happy with that you can go ahead and submit this and uh yeah put this on your website there you have it guys we've gone ahead and created a pricing card for the page which looks absolutely great and it would be perfect to go ahead and add into a SaaS application with minimal thought process we didn't have to build anything from scratch we can go ahead and use designs that other people are prompted and then we can go ahead and extend on them and we can go ahead and come up with our own ideas ourselves let me know the best prompts that you've come up with by dropping it in the comment down below and if you want more content like this make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel i've got tons of new content coming on the way until next time guys it's your boy sunny aka papa Rhett, and i will see you in the next video peace